So are you sick and tired of Candida, but somehow you seem not to be able to do all of the right things that you should be doing to defeat Candida once and for all? Well, if that's the case, stay tuned because in this video here, I shall support you in your journey against the yeast. This is Nicola Zanetti, Senior College Lecturer, Amazon best-selling author on the topic of Candida. And please, before watching this video here, go and read the disclaimer in the video description down below. So let's start with a fact. Candida is a big challenge. If you are here watching this video here, you already know that. Why is it a big challenge? Because Candida has the very annoying capacity of you think it's gone, you think you're free, and then boom, it strikes back again, making you more miserable than you were before. So it's so frustrating because like, I'm getting better, oh, now it's finally, the, 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 the nightmare is finally over, and then it comes back, and then you get better, and then it comes back. And it's so frustrating that people have been experiencing Candida for many years without being able to actually defeat it. And many times they know that if they were to do one thing, they would make their situation so much better. And still, you may feel incapable of doing that one thing which could be stick to the diet which will make your journey so much easier. So in this video here we will discuss the philosophy and the mindset of the relentless anti-candida fighter. And let's make an introduction first. So let's try to understand why does Candida come back. So why is Candida coming back after like three months in which you were feeling like in a beautiful awesome way. The reason why it comes back is because Candida is naturally present into the human body of about 70% of the human population. Now we have data which says between 65 and 80, let's say 70 for a number. But of this 70% of the human population of which you are part if you are experiencing Candida, only between 2 and 3% are actually experiencing Candida symptoms, which means, again, you. So why is that, that everybody else is not experiencing Candida symptoms, but you are? Well, you need to understand that Candida is present in your body in two different forms. There is yeast Candida, which is harmless and maybe even beneficial, and then you have fungal Candida, which is nasty, which is the one that gives you all of the nasty symptoms that you're experiencing right now. So, when Candida switches from the yeast form to the fungal form, you start to experience the symptoms. So when you do not experience the symptoms, simply what you are feeling is like there are not enough colonies of the fungal Candida for you to experience those symptoms. But it does not mean that Candida has completely left your body. It does not seem possible to completely eradicate Candida out of your body. But the good news here is that it's not random that Candida goes from the yeast form to all of the nasty issues that you are experiencing when you have the symptoms into the fungal form. It's not random. What are some of the main reasons? And then if you wanted to go in depth, there are so many videos on the channel on this topic here. Essentially, what happens is, number one, you may have like an underactive immune system, okay? So your immune system may not be capable of dealing with Candida right now. And this could be for many reasons, which we're gonna address in a second. The second problem could be you experience dysbiosis. What is dysbiosis? It is an imbalance between the good bacteria, the guardians of your body, and bad bacteria in your body. When this is present, in which you have more bad bacteria than good bacteria, Candida, which is a yeast, not a bacteria, can actually band together with the bad bacteria to become more active and more difficult to eradicate. So what you want to do, you want to have your good bacteria working well in your body. Candida can also be present for some nutritional insufficiencies, the most common ones being zinc, B6, and biotin. When you have an insufficient of one of these three nutrients, candida tends to go more often into the fungal form. Then you may have excessive levels of the female sexual hormones known as estrogens. High levels of estrogen, as an example, for someone with endometriosis, they, they will experience this. Somebody with PMS, they will experience this. They are going to be way more prone to actually develop candida. Finally, the the last thing that I want to discuss is when Candida is in an environment 
when there is a high level of sugar, so in a very high sugary environment, candida is way more comfortable in staying into the fungal form, meaning that when you eat a lot of sugar in your diet, even sugar that you don't think is there, but even if you, like if you're having a diet which is not candida friendly, it is much better for candida to go from the yeast form to the fungal form. Why? Because the fungal form, when nutrients are present, is a much better evolutionary deal than the yeast form, which is much better when there is not much to eat. Okay, so you need to realize this, that one of the most important aspects is what you do with your own diet. So this is all true and nice, but what you need to realize is that the candida diets, or the typical candida diets, are diets in which you need to make commitments and you need to be able to eat in a certain way for a period of time of about six months to one year. So this is going to be a commitment on you, okay? Why? Because technically speaking, if you really do a real candida diet, you're going to cut out like sweets, unless in some periods in which uh, I don't want to go in here, but again, there are videos on the channel that go in much depth. You will need to cut out alcohol. I mean, you will need to cut out, you should need to cut out alcohol to begin with, but certainly alcohol is extremely nasty in your candida journey. And everybody telling you it's not, you can drink vodka, stuff like that, they are simply ignorant because drinking alcohol when you have candida may actually lead to cancer. And again, I have other videos on the channel which address the topic of candida and alcohol, but I can assure you it's not true that you can drink alcohol. A lot of the foods that you may perceive as very tasty food, they could be out of the picture or at least mostly out of the picture for a very long period of time. So all of this situation here is not easy for a lot of people. And again, this is a problem because if you go again back into a diet which does have plenty of sugar, yeast candida will go into fungal candida. Why? Because it's better for candida to do so. There is nothing you can do about it. There is nothing you can do about it. So it's important to realize this important aspect, okay? So let's go even deeper into the topic. First of all, let me tell you something to support you, which is I absolutely know that candida diets are not simple. It's not just you, it's every human being entering to a candida diet. It's going to come with challenges. So don't feel guilty if you have failed in the past. That's okay. Everybody, everybody that I know of after so many years in this nutritional therapist career that I've seen everybody, even professional athletes, fail at a dietary regime at least once. So it's not on you. Don't worry. Like this is something that everybody has done. But uh, it needs to empower even more your commitment to like win this battle once and for all. Because I would like you to think right now about the consequences of breaking your diet. So let's say you've been doing your diet for three weeks, four weeks, you start to get better. Now, what are the real consequences of breaking your diet? Do you want to go back to experience the itching, the discharges, the problems in having sexual intercourse, or maybe the lack of energy, the fatigue, the brain fog, the bloating. Do you really want to go back to those candida symptoms? Because if you start to break your diet today, that may happen. So you need to realize that your consequences, there will be consequences in eating that cake, in drinking that alcohol, in, uh, I don't know, eating that pizza. There will be consequences and these consequences will be the coming back of all of the nasty symptoms that you thought they were over. Is that piece of cake actually worth, worth it? Is it? Ask yourself this. Is it worth it maybe to experience weeks or months of all of those symptoms? Because you know there will be consequences. Is that piece of cake worth months of misery? Now, there may not be consequences the first time you do it. Maybe you can get away with it if you do it one time. But doing it the first time comes with the consequences of making it much easier 
to do it a second time and a third time until you give up. And this is the pattern that happens in the majority of people when they are doing a new diet. They make a mistake one, one time, they do it a second time, and then it becomes something which can be done on a day-to-day -day basis. So easy to do so. Like uh, every addiction, which sugar is an addiction, goes like this. It's very difficult to be able to control an addiction to an acceptable level. It's usually easier to be able to not go into that addiction ever again. I'm afraid this is how the human brain works. Because when you do things that you are addicted to, let's say eating that cake, your brain will release dopamine and it will make you feel well. So why wouldn't you want to feel well? But the long-term consequences, they are dire and they're going to be really awful for you. So you really need to think very hard. If today you're about to break your diet, don't do it because the consequences will be terrifying for you. Think about it. Few seconds of the pleasure of that cake, are they really worth it? Months and months of pain with candida symptoms. You know the answer is no. So the next time you are about to break your candida diet, think about and feel in your, bodies, in your body the consequences of doing so. Feel it. Go back to where you're experiencing the candida symptoms and keep asking yourself, is it worth it? And the answer is no. And let me tell you something. I am absolutely crystal clear that you can do this. I believe you can be a relentless anti-candida fighter. I believe you can defeat candida once and for all. So if I believe you can, please follow me in this madness and maybe try to believe in that yourself. Try to believe in yourself in the same way I am believing in you and believe on the fact that you can defeat Candida. Okay? Now, how am I, am I going to support you in this journey over here? Now, down below there is a comment section. Okay? So, when you start this journey here, comment and ask for help whenever you are experiencing the issue. Okay? So you go down, I'm about to eat a cake, please someone help me. And you will see I will be there or someone in the comment section will be there as a sort of sponsor to support you. But start to believe in yourself today because you can become a relentless anti-candida fighter.